Hey there, Merlin here. This one's going to be kind of weird even for a side quest, but I still wanted to post it because uh, St. Paul Brewing Company deserves the press. Um, this one's just going to be me and a guest. M was sick and Derek was off doing other things. So uh, it's, it's just going to be two of us. And we're talking about a purple seltzer. We love purple seltzer. All right, here's the show. All right. Uh, hello and welcome, listeners, to a side quest, I suppose. This is going to be kind of a weird one because I have no other co-hosts with me. Um, I do have a guest host. Hi, uh, I'm Liberty. And uh, I guess uh, since, since we're doing introductions, uh, in chair one, I am Merlin, as usual. My guest host in, uh, I guess, chair one and a half because we don't have... We don't have chairs two three or four this week um like at all so uh i guess she's filling in for derek and m and cc and what there is broken glass on our flight tray that's nice um so one enough is one of me is enough to fill all of their shoes <laughs> one would hope uh we're here at st paul brewing in uh st paul um, and, uh, th this, this was supposed to be an M episode. Uh, they were supposed to be taking us through all this because, uh, their husband works here. However, since they, uh, th their husband couldn't be on the show because he has to, uh, maintain neutrality and evidently, uh, M themselves works for which is owned by the same people as St. Paul Brewing Company. Uh, and so can also not say anything negative about the product. Anyway, we're here at St. Paul Brewing, um, and we're we're gonna we're gonna start out here with just an example beer. We've got their Oktoberfest um, because you know it's not October yet, but it's getting there. It smells all right. It smells like a normal Marzen. Yeah, it's really subtle. Yeah, I mean, it should be it should be nice and smooth. Let's see how we go. Okay, it's a little more bitter than an Oktoberfest that I would uh, a little little more bitter than I would think for an Oktoberfest. Maybe uh, a little bit more sour, which is a little, which is kind of strange. It's it's fine. Yeah. Um, I I honestly don't normally drink a lot of beers, but I actually really like this. It does. I agree with you. Um, it tastes almost like a like a slightly hoppy cider. Yeah, I, I think that's probably intentional, right? Because you're, you're getting the noble hops there, and an uh, Oktoberfest is supposed to be really malty and sweet. So that's definitely there. Like, I'm, I'm sure it's a coincidence that it's an Oktoberfest, and it is supposed to taste a little bit like a gourd. Um, but it fits for the season. I don't know if you're getting gourd from that. If you're not, no worries. But I was going to say, you think it tastes like, like, like a squash or a pumpkin? I do, like a, like a raw squash. I could see a raw, yeah, yeah, raw squash, yes. It's got that pleasant vegetal note, um, and I do not know which cider, or which uh, cider, seltzer is which. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to do the watermelon one first. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've got the example beer to see how they brew and uh, see. Yeah, how does that smell? Does that smell like watermelon? Oh, that's hard. Actually. Oh, you're holding. Now that you're holding them up, I can tell that one's the purple one. Okay, because you had the purple before we started I did, recording. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, this smells like watermelon, but let me smell the other one because I don't know what they use to get their. They say it's purple, but it's like a very light lavender. Right. It's uh. And this is more of a pink. Honestly, closer to like a mop water blue sort of uh, sort of color for yeah, the purple. It's not, it's not a very purpley. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is what we're here to try, because St. Paul Brewing, not the only brewery in the Twin Cities that does a purple seltzer. Um, Bauhaus Brewing also does sour purple. That's one of our, that's one of the podcast favorites, just because it's so fucking weird. Um, so we're going to, we're going to try the watermelon first to see how that goes. And this it, one, that one definitely does smell like watermelon. This one is ostensibly brewed with real fruit. I, I'm not sure if you can brew with real purple, but, uh. Uh, the uh, the bartender was telling me there was there was supposed to be fruit pulp in this, or at least when the keg is first tapped. So, I mean, depending on how well they shake it, the the pulp is gonna get mixed up, uh, and because it's heavier than the actual right. liquid, it's gonna get drawn out first just because of gravity, right, and science. 
Now, if you gave that to me, it smells like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. It does to do. To be entirely honest, it's. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna prime you at all with what I'm tasting here, but I I get a particular I get a particular flavor from this, and I want to see if you get the same one. What is your first impression here? Do you remember warheads? Like warheads? Like I, that I do. I do. Sour? It tastes like a very subtle watermelon version of that. It's. It's got that kind of candy. And it's definitely watermelon by way of candy. I, what I'm getting is fun dip from this. Um, or That's, like Smarties, because it's got the... Smarties! Yeah. Smarties, definitely. Um, I've never had fun dip, I think. Really? I don't think so. I, I guess... I always went for Pop Rocks as a kid, so I know I know what fun dip is. I just... I gotcha. I just preferred, you know... Well, specifically, this tastes like Fun Dip Stick, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, is, is like, it's a long Smarty, basically. It looked like chalk. <laughs> yeah, it, it tasted like chalk, too. Uh, it tasted like fruity chalk. Yeah, this, this does taste... I always liked Warheads as a kid, but, like, they were so sour at the beginning that you never really got much flavor by the end. But it tastes... A little bit like that. I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this uh, this seltzer an accolade that I don't normally give, and in fact, it is sort of against our ethos on the show, which is you can sniff this one. This smells fine. Uh, it smells like watermelon. It does, and that's good. Most seltzers, uh, I, I know you're more of a more of a cider and mead girl, but most seltzers smell awful. I don't normally go for seltzers because all carbonated seltzer for me seems like carbonated water, which tastes like fart. Uh, it certainly smells like it. Like there's it always a smells there like is it. always a sulfuric smell with seltzer, and I'm not getting that here. No, this smells very watermelony. All right, so let's move on to the purple here, um, and. Again, it's more mop water blue, maybe a light lavender, lilac, I'm, if you will. Yeah. Lilac probably is like a very pale lilac. <laughs> oh, no, this one doesn't taste like Smarties to me. Uh, it's similar, but this one, I'm getting... I, I'm, I get nerds. Yeah, nerds or sweet tarts or just any of the any of the Wonka hard candies. Yeah. Uh, yeah but purple ones. Is this what seltzer normally tastes like? Because White Claw doesn't normally taste like this. Oh, White Claw doesn't have a purple flavor, as far as I'm aware. But it tastes like candy. That one does taste like candy. It's a lot sweeter. It's There's a lot more flavor to that than you get in a normal seltzer, which I kind of dig because it still looks like a seltzer, right? It's crystal clear. It's got a little bit of that lilac tint. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is probably... I, I would hazard to say this is better than... Uh, the the sour purple bolo, which is the only other purple flavored seltzer I've had. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's where we're landing here, right? The seltzers they they taste like their flavor, but by way of candy. Yeah, they're definitely candied. All right, so uh, let's get to ratings here. Okay. Uh, this was a very streamlined episode. I guess we only had two things to try, but. And there are only two of us. It probably yeah. is. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to rate the example beer. We don't normally do that. Uh, it's just a, a display of their brewing style. And uh, St. Paul Brewing, instantly, also the same as Flat Earth Brewing. That is, uh, they renamed the brewing company, I believe, after the Flat Earth Theory started being used by psychotics. I would, I would too. Yeah. Because it's no longer fun if people actually legitimately believe in that. Right. Hey there, Merlin again in post-production. The uh, removal of Flat Earth from the name of the brewing company has nothing to do with the Flat Earth theory espoused by psychotic crackpots and more to do with the fact that the owner doesn't like flat beer and doesn't want to give the impression that the beer is flat. It happened in 2019, too, much later than I thought it did. Alright, back to the episode. Did you see um, Bill Nye, like, rip into that creationist? I did. That would... We had, like, a viewing party. Nice. <laughs> that was hilarious. I'm sorry. That was... Because <laughs> I'm was sure... That, was that the Sean Hannity appearance? I don't think so. I think that was... I can't remember exactly 
who hosted that. But I think that Bill Nye was like really upset. I mean, I can see it. Yeah. That like this creationist museum dude was like really propagating for like creationism to be taught in schools again. (laughs) And he was like, I'm going to, I'm going to rip this dude a new one. Yeah, that it's it's the morally right thing to it do. It is the morally right thing to do. But I'm sure the create I'm sure that he believed in flat earth too. It's possible. Uh they usually go hand in hand. They're complementary. Well, they didn't used to be, but yes, they are they certainly are now. At this point. <laughs> yeah, if you believe in one, you probably, you probably believe in the believe rest of them. Yeah. I mean, if if it's any consolation, those people are mostly dead of ivermectin poisoning by now. You know that that is, in fact, so as a nursing student, I have to say ivermectin is, in fact, used on people, but for the same reason it's used on horses, to get rid of tapeworms and other parasites. Well, it's not getting rid of their brain worms, so... Yeah, sometimes... (laughs) Like, it is a legitimate medicine, but it doesn't work on viruses. Yeah. Is the point. It it works on multicellular organisms. Right. It works it works on these, you know, parasites that like that get into your gullet from undercooked food. So they work for that. They don't work on a virus, especially a respiratory virus. <laughs> Yeah, this, I'm, I'm sure that none of our listeners really need to hear this. Uh, if you did, now you have equally valid anecdotal evidence against the use of ivermectin. The ivermect- the people who make ivermectin in like the U.S. have had to actually like put on their website, like, we don't support you using this for COVID. Like, they've, they've sadly had to like put on their website, please don't use this for COVID. Oh this, my this god. This is an anti parasitic. This is not. <laughs> we, we truly live in the dumbest timeline. Uh, anyway, let's get into ratings here. Like I said, we don't rate the example beer, but let's. Uh, okay. Uh, I assume you've never heard an episode, so I can I can give you a rundown of our rating system. I would like a rundown of the rating system. Just, yeah. Just so I do this properly. So we rate on a five and a half point system. Um, okay. Our top level is buy, which is run out and buy it right now. Okay. Uh, second tier is try, which is. Don't go out of your way, but if you can find it, try it. Then there's Psy, which does what it says on the tin. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you get the idea. Uh, then there's Cry, which is, this side, this seltzer hurt me. And then there's Die, which is, it hurt me, it's going to hurt you. It's going to come for everything you love. Kill it. And the, sum, the, the fifth and a half point sometimes, why? Um, why does this exist? Right. It's like, this is fine it's not bad but i don't understand why you would ever want it like who thought this was a good idea what's the use case for this why right okay so you know our rating system so how would you rate the watermelon seltzer that you just finished try i'd say try yeah i'm gonna second that uh it's definitely a try maybe a low try for me um it you can do worse like yeah uh, it's not it's drinkable Like, I willingly drunk it. It's not my favorite. I definitely prefer the beers here. Yeah. But I'm also not a seltzer girl. It didn't it didn't hurt. Yeah. So two tries for for the watermelon and for the purple. Liberty, what would you give the purple? So having said I'm not a seltzer girl and being rather stingy with my drinking money. I would give that a low buy. It tastes enough like nerds that I would say it's it's worth the money to buy it. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna concur. This is a fun one. Um, I I'm actually I'm gonna concur with that that entirely. Low buy. Um, it tastes like candy in a, a very pleasant way. I love sweet tarts. Um, yeah, and I think. Part of this is that I'm going to give it extra points for scarcity because you cannot get this in, in a can. You have to come to the brewery to have this. Right. Um, and they're ostensibly not going to have it forever. So uh, buy it while you can for the 12 of you who listen to this. <laughs> but yeah, it's 
it's very light. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a seltzer. So. Yeah, it's a seltzer. Um, and if it gets you out into the brewery, the brewery is cool. The brewery like is this. really cool. Like, it's, it's the nicest patio I've ever seen. Yeah. And, like, I'm not, all, I'm also not a beer drinker. Like, I don't normally drink beers. I really kind of want to try a few more of them before I head home because, like, they have some good beers here. So, like, you're not just getting the seltzer. You're getting an opportunity to drink a few other things. And they have good pizza. And they have they have really good pizza. So, yeah, uh, I, I guess yeah. the brewery as a whole, we give a solid buy. Yeah, the buy, yeah, the buy the brewery. <laughs> it, the entire St. Paul Brewing Company, do it. <laughs> Uh, it put it put St. Paul and it put the MSP brewing scene on the map. It was like one of the first ones, uh, along with Surly. They did the Cygnus X1 Porter. All right, let's uh, let's wrap it here. Uh, this has been a side quest at St. Paul Brewing Company. Uh, good night, listeners, and uh, you know what? For this one only, go ahead and sniff the seltzer. It's fine. <laughs>